So in addition to just having a, a good looking usable interface, Thesis actually does some pretty amazing things that I can't wait to show you. And uh, the first one that I want to show you is like uh, like this, you're looking at a default layout right here of Thesis. It's a three column, three column default layout with a 480 pixel wide content column and two sidebars. And uh, I mean, I like this layout just fine, but I also like to, to change it up a little bit. And I, I want to show you just how easy that is with uh, the new Thesis 1.5 Design Options panel. So let's take a look. Heading on over to Design Options. And now here we are. We've got uh, options much like the regular Thesis Options page, only these all deal with um, cool aspects of your design that you're going to love to mess around with. First, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the site layout. Right now, I said we're using a three-column layout. And uh, there's the width of our uh, respective columns. There's the content column coming in at 480 pixels. Sidebar is at 195, and sidebar two is also at 195. Um, let's try a 500 pixel wide content column with 120 pixel sidebar one, 180 pixel sidebar two, and then column order. We can also specify that. So let's, uh, let's put the content in the middle, like this little diagram here. And we'll save that. Let's take a look. So we saved, hit refresh, and there we go. The layout has changed, and now we have uh, a sidebar column sidebar layout. And uh, this this left hand column is 120 pixels, I believe, is what I specified here. 120, and then the right sidebar is going to be 180, and we've got our content there in the middle. And it was just that simple to change our layout. And, uh, you know, coming from the standpoint of, you know, somebody who did freelance design for a couple of years, uh, you know, being able to change a layout, like the HTML changes that are implied by a move like we just saw, um, it kind of blows the mind that it can be done with the flick of a, a mouse button these days because uh, that's something that took quite a few, you know, quite a few minutes and, and uh, code wrangling to test in the past. I think it's pretty remarkable that we're able to do that now. And uh, also of note here is that when uh, Thesis's design changes, um, no, no markup, no CSS, no additional BS is served up in the, the head area of the, of, the, of the site. When you view the page source, you don't see anything up here in the head uh, that's CSS related besides the links to the style sheets and some premium themes and other other themes that I've seen when you do changes like this they they put all the CSS changes up here in the header which is really a cop-out and that's that's a, like a that's a technique that's not recommended not only is it not recommended um, you're advised not to stuff your header with a bunch of information like that like stylistic information that really doesn't belong anywhere in the HTML in fact separating style from HTML was the whole reason CSS was even invented back in the day. So having all that stuff served up here in the header would be defeating the purpose. So that's just one of those little nuances of thesis where thesis does it right and that, that's something that's important to me and I hope that that's something that's also important to you. And so anyway that is uh, one part of the thesis design options. Let's go take a look at our font selector. All right. So the, the default font we're using here, this is Georgia. It's one of my favorite typefaces, but it's a, a serif typeface, and it's, it's everywhere right now. And that's just a little boring, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do to change that up. Kill this, and uh, we can change our overall font. Right now it's Georgia. Let's, uh, let's spice it up a little bit. We'll go with Corbell. The champagne is not. It is size 16 now. All I'm doing is setting fonts and font sizes based on, uh, you know, picking out values that are already available to me. We can do this. Change our headlines. Change their size. All right, that's fun enough. We'll hit the save button. So I made a few changes. Let's see what happened. All right, the, the new primary font is Corbell. Uh, Still waiting for some stuff to load here. Uh, I've chosen Cambria as my headline font, and we're seeing that now. Um, and you can see that the fonts have changed everywhere. They've changed over here in the sidebars, uh, in the content area, and you can control pretty much everything. You can control these. These are the sidebar headings. 
Um, you control those. You control the nav menu. You control this. This is your, your header text. This is your tagline. Um, you have really, really finite control over the fonts and size. This is your byline, for instance. You have finite control over the fonts and font sizes in play all around the theme. And that's just really handy because you can set type in different settings and see how it looks. For instance, uh, this is size 16 Corbel set in a sidebar content sidebar layout. And I get to test that now as, it, like, as a designer or as somebody running my site. I can see what this looks like. Uh, really at no cost because I can change it in, in a second. Let's see a different font. How about Arial size 14? No problem. Hit save. The whole layout adjusts. And there it is with Arial. So, you know, eh, you know, like I said, coming from the perspective of somebody who used to do freelance design, just the ability to make these kinds of changes like that non-destructively on the fly with just a click of a button, uh, to me, that's totally remarkable. Like, I can't believe that now we're, we're here when a couple years ago, uh, you know, me and everybody else, we're, we were coding this totally by hand and making changes like that and testing different scenarios was just much more difficult than it is today.